Very good, then you can. Okay, so dito tayo na tapos sa uh, drills and drilling nung last time. So I think uh, recap lang tayo on drills and drilling before I proceed to the, to the next topic. And so when we say... So when we say drilling, it is the operation of producing hole by removing metal from solid mass using twist drill. So, yung iba medyo nahirapan siguro in using a uh, drilling. And then, I think, meron din naman na magagaling na mag-drill. And then, from uh, our activities, I think uh, majority sa inyo is uh, mas nahasa on how to create a drill, create a, creating a hole. And then, Um, from the experience, nakita natin yung function ng iba't ibang mga tools. So you can interrupt me anytime man kapag ka meron kayong gustong itanong o kaya gustong ano. Pero I record this meeting for the purpose na ma-review ninyo yung lessons. And then later on, I will be playing uh, some video presentations to clarify some uh, on the notes. Ano? So... Yung iba na tutoring magpalit ng twist drill. So pag sinabi natin twist drill, yun yung tool that does work for the drilling by slicing metal as it rotates. So yun yung pinakabala. So and then meron din tayong tinatawag na spiral flutes. And then I think uh, some of this was discussed on our discussions on our uh, previous meeting. And then yung drill bit materials can be high speed steel drill, cemented or carbon steel. So, pag sinabi natin twist drill, it is made of carbon steel or high-speed alloy steel, which is satisfactorily used for general uh, run or work. Okay, may nagpapa-admit. Admit all ko lang. Okay, pa, mamaya ako mag-attendance. Ano? Hindi ko lang mag-tita kung paano ba yung video na yun. Hindi ako sanay sa... Hindi ako sanay sa ano, sa... Zoom. Okay pa. And then next, yung ating mga drill terminology. So we have the dead center, point, hill, lip clearance, and margin. So na-discuss na naman natin to last time. So we will proceed with the next topic which is the drill press. Okay. Kita ba? Malino ba yung presentation? Um, yan. Hindi ko makita kasi kung ano yung ipinay-play ka. Pawala. Okay, so drill press. So it is a machine used for drilling operation available in a wide variety of types and sizes. So para mas maintindihan natin what is drill press, I will show you a video presentation.
Sir, di po nagsasalita. My name is Tomas and you're watching Casual DIY channel. Today I want to cover some basics about a drill press. What it is, how it's built, how to operate it and what it can actually do. Check out the video. Right and so what is a drill press? In simple terms, it's just a drill. Okay, the quilt comes down with your drill bit and you can drill accurate and straight holes. Obviously, there's far more we can do with this tool, which we'll all cover. However, the question is, do you actually need one if you already got a drill in your workshop? There are a few things that a drill press can do a lot better and safer rather than just using a normal handheld. A, it will be far more accurate if that's what you need in your project. It's very easy to set this tool to make repetitive and accurate holes, but we'll cover that a bit later on as well. It's a perfect tool to use larger bits, like for example, a forstner bit or a hole saw, that this will be far better and safer to use rather than a normal drill. As you can see, my particular drill is a benchtop drill, you can also get a floor standing one, but that obviously is far more expensive, although it can tackle much larger pieces. So it all depends what your needs are. But let's talk about how it's built and what you can expect from this tool. More or less, all the uh, drill presses will be made in a similar fashion and they will look very, very similar. On the back, you can see that's the motor. Now the motor itself is actually connected to the pulleys that are located at the top of the machine. These pulleys, how they are set up, dictate the speed of the whole uh, drill. Now inside, usually you get um, how to set these pulleys up and that will represent uh, a respective RPM, i.e. speed of the tool. My goes from 210 RPMs right up to 3040. To change the layout of the pulleys is very, very simple. Uh, usually there's a locking uh, bolt like this one over here that locks the whole motor. Then you've got the lever that allows you to pull the whole motor forward and release the tension from the pulleys. Basically just change the position of the pulleys like that. Um, obviously you need to follow the instructions um, to make sure you're in the correct places for them. Add the tension again by holding the handle, lock uh, the position of the motor with those uh, knobs that are located on each side of the machine. And now you've got a correct tension again on the pulleys and you're ready to go. On the side of the machine we've got the handle that operates the drill press and obviously the quilt how low it will go in my case i've got eight centimeters of reach on this machine but there's a really cool feature that comes with i think all the um, drill presses you can basically set up the depth of your drilling so that's very helpful if you don't want to drill through your material but you want to 
top at a certain uh, position at a certain depth of uh, drilling so that's very very helpful here in my case is just uh, that's just located over here and so it will stop at a correct position set up by me also what you can do with this uh, for example if you need um, the drill bit or anything else any other bit to stay at a certain height you can just lock that position in place as well so that could be very helpful now over here we've got the chuck of the drill so if you've got a normal um, for example cordless drill um, it works in the same fashion it operates on the same uh, way now in my case this is a keyless chuck i.e i can do it and undo it just by hand tightening it like so but in many cases you may get chucks that require a key it will look something like this for me personally i prefer the keyless ones as usually I would just lose the key and uh, I would get in trouble with that. So I've got a drill bit here, it's uh, for wood. And so it's ever so simple to lock it in place. Just spin uh, the locking mechanism like so, two hand motion, lock it in place and this is not going absolutely anywhere. And now this is ready to operate. You've got the handle here and you can just make the holes that you need. Now on the other side of the drill press, that's the on and off switch. On top of it, in my uh, particular um, drill, I do have a guide, I do have a laser guide. And I have to say it's quite accurate and it's easy to set up to make sure it's accurate. So uh, that sometimes comes in handy. Now don't look at this uh, house little thing, that's my dust extraction that I've made myself. But uh, we'll touch on that um, a little bit later. Next, we've got the table of uh, the drill itself. Usually they are very small. And in my case, for example, I do woodworking. So it's nice to have something bigger so I can rest my pieces. Uh, and I'll show you later on what jig, what actually table I made for this drill. But yes, usually you get something similar to this. It does offer some options of clamping your workpiece. And this is actually very important when you operating a drill press to actually clamp your piece onto the table itself because you know like with anything um, there is a lot of power in this drill if you're holding the piece that you're drilling by your hand what can happen is the drill bit can get stuck somehow inside of your piece and just rip it out of your hand and spin it around so obviously there's a potential for an injury so as i said it's always best practice to clamp your work uh, to the table itself that's the best way now the table itself actually offers quite a wide variety of setup i.e for example you can take it lower or higher depending on what you're drilling so at the back uh, there's this clamping mechanism uh, that you need to undo here and usually on the other side you've got a handle that you as you spin it goes up or, or down depending on uh, you know what you need However, in my case, I've got a, a little bit of a different setup. I'm just using my drill to um, take the table lower or higher, depending on what I need. And now when the table is at the height you require, you just lock it in place with the locking mechanism you've got with your drill at the back of the machine. And that's now stable. On top of that, if you need to, for example, in my particular case, I've got another locking mechanism underneath it and I can just spin my work table uh, to the desired position. Also in my case I can actually uh, rotate the whole arm left to right just like so. There's a bolt underneath there that I need to undo and the scale of what angle it will tilt to. So that will be quite handy if you need to make some holes under a specific angle. However to get the most out of your drill press I would recommend uh, that you make your own table for your drill press it gives you then a lot more scope for uh, handling larger pieces it gives you more ability to clamp your workpiece so i've got some t-tracks here i've got an aluminium profile over here with some t-slots in it so that works as a fence a stop block system can be put in place thanks to that and on top of it, in this particular table, I've got the ability to shift the top of the table on the X and the Y axis as well. On top of that, if you are actually uh, making holes through your workpiece, 
I've got a cookie cut in the middle over here so you don't damage your uh, tabletop so that ensures the quality um, of your drilling and you won't have any blowouts any tear outs anything like that so that's a very uh, cool addition here now if you are interested in my particular uh, table I've done a whole video on how to make it all the steps are covered so if you want to check out how to make one of these I'm gonna drop a link to my video down below in the description of this video uh, so when you finish watching this one you can go ahead and check it out it's definitely worth making now for example I've got this piece of MDF I want to pre-drill some holes at the same distance from the edge of the board okay so this is where the fence comes in really handy I can just set the fence to the desired position uh, just like so making sure that I'm the right spot lock it in place and now each time I'm gonna have a hole that's at the same distance so that speeds up my work on top of that I've got a dust extraction solution here uh, for me it works absolutely perfect so I can locate it wherever I need it to be um, so that helps in containing the mess on the table now before you actually start drilling anything you need to make sure that your setup is square i.e. the drill bit is at 90 degrees to your table if not you need to make the adjustments for that just use a normal a square that's available to you place it against your drill bit from different sides making sure that your whole setup is square ultimately will make sure that your holes that you're drilling are nice and square and exactly what you wanted so that's one of the basics you need to cover how to adjust this I did show you that the table itself has got some adjustment there so just work with that um, it's very simple to do nothing to it really but that's basically the most important thing you need to do before you start working with a drill press And as you can see, we've got the holes made exactly from the distance we needed. On top of it, as I mentioned, it gives you the ability to install a stop block if you need some repetitive cuts. In my case, obviously you've got the T-tracks here, but you can do the same thing on the fence. Plus you've got the ability to add some clamps to make sure that your workpiece will not be ripped out of your hand when you're drilling through it so that's nice and stable we've got the uh, stop block over here so we can make some repetitive uh, holes now i've installed a larger force snippet so for example if you want to make some um tea light holders anything like that so yeah force the bit is the way to go it's a larger bit so you need more control over it hence this tool is perfect for that and on top of it we actually want to stop at a certain depth not to go through the whole thing and remember we do have that ability to set this uh, drill to a certain depth so that's sorted now uh, I'm just going to bring the fence a little bit closer now the fence also helps with the stability of your workpiece i.e if for example the bit grabs your material it will actually not spin around itself because the fence will be holding that in place so in a way it's a really good uh, safety feature as well just gonna add a few clamps to it to make sure it's nice and secure and now look at that straight away we've got the tea light holder just like that very simple as i mentioned before it's also a perfect tool for a um, hole saw like this one the larger ones where it's very difficult to control this with your hand with a normal free hand drill and this is absolutely perfect so let's make a hole now now there's one very important thing that i forgot to mention to you guys with regards to the speeds uh, setups of your drills because uh, then you can ask yourself well why do I have so many options how does that matter it all depends what drill bits you are using and what materials are you drilling in so for example if you're using a large force bit or your hole so 
you want to go to the lowest possible speeds but you will also use the lower rpms for example if you're drilling in metal the medium rpms if you're drilling for wood normal general purpose uh, drill bits as well and the highest rpms for really small bits but uh, i will try to link down below to a website that will uh, tell you exactly uh, what speeds are best for what Okay, so that's the discussion for uh, drill press. I think uh, some of you have experience in how to use the drill press. And then, siguro ang assurance natin para mas maganda yung magiging product out of drilling is una dapat ay sinisecure natin yung ating uh, device na dinidrill. So, paano natin masisecure yung uh, dinidrill natin? So, ang iba, naglalagay ng clamp. Yung pangalawa naman, nagdadagdag ng support kagaya ng kahoy o kaya ng goma para hindi mag-spill or dumulas yung dinidrill natin. And then, ano pa yung ginagawa yung technique? Yung iba naman, sinesenter punch muna yung dinidrill para masigurado na siya ay hindi dadaplace or tatab yung tata, uh, dadaplace. Ano? So, hindi ko alam kung mamamatay ba ito. May countdown na remaining time at grade to pro. Ano ba yun? So, pag nag-end uh, meeting tayo, mag-rejoin na lang tayo tapos mag-resend ako ng panibagong link. Ano? So, I don't know kung anong minayari. Kasi may remaining time dito na 7 and then at grade to pro. May bayad yata para makapag-zoom meeting na hindi pro. Okay, so, I'll continue na lang. So, do you have questions with regard to drill press? So, from the discussion, na discuss yung parts ng drill press. Am I audible? Naririnig ba? Naririnig ako. Okay, so, from the discussion, audible ba? Naririnig ko. May kausap pa ba? Okay. Hindi ko maintindihan kung may audience pa ako. Naririnig ba ako? Yes po, sir. Audible po. Yes, audible. Thank you. Okay, so let me share again. Okay, from the video presentation na discuss yung part ng drill press, yung base, yung column, yung table, yung drilling head, at saka yung hand feed lever, depth stop, and drill chop. So, siguro yung isang pinakamahirap sa pag-operate ng drill press is yung pagpapalit ng drill chuck pero madali lang naman siya dahil uh, iikot nyo lang yung jack chucky and then yung hand fin lever ibababa nyo lang as you go with drilling operations. And then next, yung tinatawag natin ito yung parts. Ano? Oh, di tarbawin ng doktor yan. Ha? <laughs> okay, ito yung depth stop, yung drilling head. Kita ba yung arrow ko? And then yung hand feed lever natin ito, yung binataas, baba ninyo. And then yung spindle lead, chuck, yan. Dito yung uh, pangyapapalit tayo ng drill bits. Ano? And then table, yung iba naglalagay dito ng clamp, naglalagay ng adjuster para... Ano? And then yung table clamp natin, na-adjust din yan sa tunay na buhay dapat. And then yung column. Okay. And then ito yung ating mga drill chucks. Okay. Pinapalitan din siya kung nasasira. Drill sleeves, drill sockets, drill vise. And then we have the clamps or straps. Okay. So pwede natin siyang gamitin para masecure natin yung ating dinidrill na hindi siya gagalaw. So meron tayong clamping hinge. Una, always place both close to work is. Have a uh, uh, popping block slightly higher than work. Surface being clamp. Insert piece of paper between machine table, the workpiece to prevent shifting. Next, place metal shim between clamp and workpiece. Use a sub base or liner under rough casting. Shim parts that do not lie flat to prevent clapping. 
And then safety rules in using drill press. Siyempre, unang-una, never wear loose clothing. So, bakit ano siya? Siyempre, pagkaluag pa, lagot-lagot, so pwedeng ma, uh, ma-drill. Ang iba, gumagamit ng hairnet or cup to protect hair to prevent from becoming caught in the removing parts of the drill press. Ang sunod, never wear rings, watches, braids, lead, or necklace while moving, working in a machine shop. And always wear safety glasses when operating any machine. So, syempre, mayroong mga debris and for, mayroong mga foreign materials tayong dinidirig dun sa metal. So, pwede siyang tumalsik. Kung magkaroon ng hangin, pwede ma tayong mapuwing. Ano? Never set the speed, adjust, or measure the work until the machine is completely stopped. Keep the work area and floor clean and free oil of oil and grease. Never clamp copper shank drills and mills or non-standard tools in a drill chuck. Never leave a chuck in a drill chuck at any time. So, syempre, baka mawala. Always use the brush to remove chips. Always clamp work pieces. When drilling holes larger than one half inch, which is 12.7 mm in diameter, when drilling sheet metal, it is necessary to clamp the sheet on a piece of wood para maiwasang lumalaw. So, ang iba nang lalagay ng clamp, ang iba nang lalagay ng vice grip, etc. Ano nang yan? And then, always use the brush to remove chips. Yung kanina sa video ang ginagawa, gumagamit siya ng vacuum para ma-remove yung mga uh, chips. And then, always clamp for pieces when drilling holes larger than one half inch. When drilling sheet metal, it is necessary to clamp the sheet on a piece of wood, reducing drilling pressure as the drill breaks through the workpiece. So yung iba nang lalagay ng langis para hindi mag-init. Always remove the bars from a hole that has been drilled. Next, we have the counter sinking. Okay, So I will show you a video presentation all about counter sinking para mas maitindihan natin. Okay pa. So far, do you have questions? So far, wala. Okay pa. Lang. Okay po. So let's continue.
Okay po, so if hindi ko po siya matapos, mamaya ay mag-share ako ng link ng recording. Ikukunti, bali ang mangyayari, yung recording natin ngayong umaga, idudugtong ko yung recording mamayang hapon. So ang i-discuss ko mamaya sa mamayang hapon, sa kabilang section ay yung kadugtong ng discussions. And then, ikakap ko yung, ikakapi ko yung recording natin today and then yung recording mamayang hapon sasamahin ko tapos ipopost ko sa YouTube para matapos yung discussions. Okay lang po ba? Okay, so tuloy natin. Ano, so you have the idea on what is a uh, counter sinking. So basically from uh, the video presentation, meron na siya pag sinabing counter sinking, meron na tayong existing na butas and then yung butas is ating i-drilled lang ulit para makag, uh, magkaroon tayo na tapered or cone shape enlargement on the top of the drill. So it is the process of enlarging top end of hole to shape of cone to accommodate conical shape heads of fasteners. So ang procedures natin na uh, pakita naman din sa video presentations, una, you will mount an 82 degree countersink in drill chuck, adjust the spindle, and then you will uh, enlarge the existing hole. Okay pa? Yeah, to fit yung screw heads next, the what we call dreaming so ang dreaming parang counter sinking pinagkaiba lang ang ating bala ay reamer it is the operation of sizing and producing smooth round hole from previously drilled or bored holes it is a rotary cutting tool with severe straight or helical cutting edges along body it used to accurately size and finish holes previously forming by drilling So, meron tayong two types of reamers. We have the hand reamers and the machine reamers. So, yung pinaka-common natin yung ating machine reamers. So, reamer parts, as you can see, we have the shank, body, angle, or chamfer. Okay, ito yung topper shank. Ito ba yung arrow ko? And then, we have the body and we have the blade. Okay? Okay, reamer care. Never uh, turn reamer backward, ruin edges. Always store reamers in separate containers to prevent cutting edges from being nicked. Never roll or drop reamers on metal surfaces. When not in use, reamer should be oiled. Fine free cutting grinding wheel should be used for resharpening reamers. Okay, procedures for using a uh, reaming. So mount on a parallel vise as you can see in the picture. Okay, to fully understand what is, uh, ano, I will show you again procedures and how to use the ring
The Fundamentals of Hand Reaming What is reaming? Reaming is the process of using this multi-flute tool to create a precise hole. And it's, it's making an existing hole, a drilled hole, bigger than it already is. When you drill, usually your tolerances are plus a couple of thou, minus a couple of thou. Whenever you're reaming, you have plus or minus a few tenths. When you drill, if it drills at an angle, you are going to ream at that angle because the reamer is going to follow your drilled hole. So that's just something to keep in mind. Reaming is used for dowels and fixtures and just close tolerance holes. If you have to have a super precise hole, you might want to look at doing it on the CNC mill with circle interpolating with an end mill, or you might want to grind it out. But if it's something that needs to be plus or minus a few tenths just for a dowel so you can press it in or it needs to be a slip fit, then reaming is a great way to go. It has, as you can see, it has multiple teeth on this tool. And that's just so that the chips don't influence the finish on the reamer while it's reaming it anyway. Now, whenever you're reaming a hole, you want to have to have material left inside that hole for it to cut. Typically that's going to be 5 to 18 thou a side. Now you'll hear different machinists say different things. The main thing is the hole needs to be smaller than your reamer so it has some material to cut. You don't want to have too much material. Typically I like to leave 5 to 8 thou a side and uh, slow your reamer way down. So if you're drilling at a thousand spindle speed you want to slow it down to 350 to 400. You're going to go a lot slower with your, with your spindle when it comes to reaming. You also you want to use oil so that you can have a better finish and it will keep your tool sharp. You can buy reamers of all different sizes. You can buy them with 5 tenths increments for all your different dowel size holes. And they sell them and you can buy custom reamers. and. So they sell them in every dimension that you can imagine. That is all that you really need to know when it comes to reaming. You want to drill it smaller, have your spindle speed going slow. My name is Mark Richardson. I'm an instrument maker specialist at the University of Wisconsin College of Engineering Shops. And today we'll be showing you how to ream a hole. The equipment that you are going to need are parallels, a number three center drill, a 15 64 drill, a quarter inch reamer, your material, a rubber hammer, a drill chuck, and cutting fluid. The first thing we need to do is put the part in the vise. Use a rag to remove any chips and oils that may be in the vise, and then follow up by wiping it out with your hand to make sure any lint and stray pieces may have been removed. Follow that up with putting your parallels in your vise, and then secure your part completely inside the vise, and tap it down so that the parallels are completely tight. Next install the drill chuck in the mill using the collet closer and then put your number three center drill in the drill chuck. Make sure it's secure. Start by using a center drill to start your hole. Make sure you use cutting fluid every time you use a cutter.
remove your center drill and install your drill which is going to be the 15 60 fourths. Use the speed calculator to calculate the speeds and then drill your hole all the way through. Make sure you use cutting fluid and peck drill. Replace the drill with the reamer. Anytime you ream, you will need to make sure that you drill your hole at a size slightly smaller than your reamer. You would like to have approximately 15 thousandths left to be able to ream. So in other words, for a quarter inch hole, you would use a 15 60 horse drill. When you start to ream, you also need to be aware of the fact that you have to slow down the RPMs on that reamer. You do not run it at the same speed as a drill. So you want to run that speed at approximately one-third of the estimated speed for the drill. In this case, we should run this at about 500 RPM. You are now ready to ream your hole. First, remove all chips from the top of the part and from the hole. Once you have done that, you can start reaming. Make sure that you use cutting fluid every time that you use a reamer. When you ream, you need to make sure that you do not peck like you would a drill. You need to go straight through the hole. Once you've gone all the way through, you will stop the spindle and then remove your reamer from the hole. So we have completed the reaming of this hole. This is a through hole, but sometimes you may not want a through hole. You may have slightly thicker stock that you're going to use and you want to put a blind hole into it. The blind hole only goes part way through your material. So now we will cover the process of doing that. Once you have secured your part in your vise, you will need to use the center drill again to start your hole. Now you will need to drill your hole, remove your center drill, install your drill, and drill the hole to the desired depth. Start drilling the hole, but only go about 50 to 100,000 steep and then stop, and then you will need to set your DRO. Now I'm going to drill it to the depth that I desire. Now remove your drill and install the reamer. Remember you need to slow down your speed. Use cutting oil and ring your hole. You will ring till you reach the bottom of the hole, shut off the spindle, raise your quill, remove your chips, but there may be some chips down in the bottom of the hole. To remove those chips, you will need to use a little bit of compressed air and a rag. Make sure you cover the hole up with a rag. Aim the compressed air at about a 45 degree angle and one quick blast will remove any extra debris that may be inside the hole. Once you have done that, you will need to ream the hole one more time. Bring your reamer down to the bottom of the hole where you reamed it, lift up ever so slightly, turn on the spindle and ream it to the bottom. Once you have done that, you have completed your hole. 
So that is how you ream a through hole and a blind hole. Once you have completed these operations, make sure you clean up your workstation. If you have any questions regarding the process of reaming these holes, make sure you consult any professional staff at the COE shops. Okay, so from the video presentations, it is stated that reaming can be used for creating a blind hole or depth hole. So again, ano nga pinagkaiba ng depth hole at saka through hole? Anybody? Any volunteer? Okay, so yung isa, di ba, kalhati lang, yung isa naman lampasan yung butas. Okay? Tuloy natin. Okay, the next topic is all about counter boring. So, when we say counter boring, kagaya rin lang siya ng uh, reaming. It is enlarging top of previously drilled holes to give in depth to provide square shoulder for held of, of bolt or cap screw. Yung counter sinking uh, conical shape screw heads. Ito naman para dun sa mga um, square shoulder or square bolts. Ano yung ulo. So, this is the operation of enlarging end of hole that has been drilled previously. So, depth slightly greater than head of bolt, cap screw, or pin it is to accommodate. Uh, accommodate. So, ito yung process. Ano, para lang din siyang counter sinking and reaming. So, procedure for counter bore a hole. So, set up and fasten work securely. Drill proper size of hole. Mount correct size, set drill press speed, and then bring counter bore close to work, and start machine up, and apply cutting fluid and counter bore. Okay po. So again, let's uh, have a short video presentations again, all about um, counter bore. The principles behind counterboring. Counterboring is meant for socket head cap screws so that they go below the head or the surface of your part. Same principle for countersinking for a, a flat head. You just don't want your bolt sticking above your part so you use a counterbore. Counterbore has something called the pilot. The pilot is the shaft on the end of the cutting tool that is used for a guide into the hole. It has cutting flutes just like anything else and it's flat on the bottom so that it matches the bottom head of the bolt. All you have to do is measure the distance of your bolt from here to here. So you just measure the thickness of the head of your bolt and in this tutorial we are going to be doing a six millimeter bolt so we are using a six millimeter counterbore on the shaft of the counterbore it actually says six millimeters so if it says eight millimeters is for an eight millimeter bolt if it says six millimeters is for a six millimeter bolt and same for standard so measuring the head of the bolt it's about 230 so we need to be at least 240, 250 down, so that the head of the bolt does not stick above the part. First thing that we need to do is the same principle applies to drilling a specific depth. You want to make sure, since we are going a quarter inch down, that there is a quarter inch distance or more from the tip of the pilot to the bottom of your part, or the top of your part. Then the very next thing we need to do is bring our counterbore down until it touches our part and lock the quill. The very next step that we want to take is putting a stop on our quill so that when we lift the quill up it hits our part and the stop at the same time. 
So not only is it hitting the top of my part, it's also hitting my quill stop. Now all we have to do is bring the knee up a quarter inch and then run and then turn the spindle on and counterbore it. So I just brought my knee up 250 thou. So that way when I bring my quill down it's hitting my part, but if you look at your quill stop, it's staying away from your quill stop a quarter inch. Very next thing we need to do is turn the spindle on and then cut our part. With counter bores, it's the same concept of countersinking. You do want to go a lot slower. You want to be in the 100, 2 to 300 range. Uh, the softer the material, the faster you can go. On still, you want to be about 100 or so. Just play around with it. Use a little bit of oil for lubrication. And turn your spindle on. You can peck if you want to. And that's all it takes. Now all we have to do is move our counter bore out of the way and check to make sure the head of our bolt goes below the top of our part. Now if you want to, you can flip it upside down. That way you don't just drop it in there and you can't get it out. So we can put it upside down and it obviously goes below the top of our part. And that's all a counter bore is meant for. And that concludes our tutorial for counterboring on a manual mill. Okay, so I think we will end muna at last that part, counter boring. So actually, yung counter sinking, counter boring and leaning is almost similar. Ang pinakaiba lang nila yung parang pinaka drill bit is magkaiba. Pero ang pinaka initial yung tatlo, kailangan muna ng may drill drill. Okay po. So, expect the video recording. Uh, meron akong screen recording na ginagawa ngayon sa akin ng laptop, laptop. And then I will collide mamaya yung mga videos from recording ng zoom recording ng screen recording. And then mamaya, dun sa afternoon sessions ko, I will discuss the part 2 of our discussions all about tapping and pie fitting and union. So, yun yung ipopost ko mamaya nga po. Share ko na lang yung recording din on my uh, YouTube channel. Okay pa. So thank you very much. So mag-lunch muna tayo dahil sabi ni Raven ay meron daw kayo um, class ng alas 12. Okay pa. Thank you very much po. And then expect the recording, la recording later. Thank you. Thank you po.